there is now a movement to defund the Confederate Memorial Park in, uh, for those of you who don't know where it is, it's near Marbury. It's technically in Chilton County. And the Confederate Memorial Park, for those of you that have never had the pleasure of visiting it, it has two Confederate cemeteries where there are, there are other people I'm sure that weren't involved in the war buried there as well, but primarily it is Confederate soldiers. There are about 300 people buried in the two cemeteries there. They also have uh, some historically significant landmarks within it. For example, there's an old church that is from the Civil War area, uh, area, the Civil War era. And so you can actually go there and visit it and see what the church looked like. Uh, by the way, fantastic acoustics in that building. I mean, you can sing there and even somebody that's only a decent singer on his best day like me can actually sound pretty good in a congregation if you're singing because it's got those, uh, those low wooden roofs. The acoustics are just fantastic in there. But anyway, uh, not to get off on that, there's several other big historic sites. They have maps where you can look at it. They have a, you know, basically the layout of a town and what it would have looked like in the Confederate area, era. So uh, a lot of historic significance there. Then they also have a small museum where you can go and see a lot of different artifacts from the Confederate era. Uh, they have them from both sides. Now, obviously, it's heavier on the Confederate side because this is Alabama. This was a part of the Confederacy, ergo. They're going to have more artifacts that depict things from the Confederate side just because there's a larger abundance of them nearby. But anyway, so that's part of it. They also have several nature trails. Uh, got a really big... Um, Let's see, they, they got a big pond out there. They got a really gigantic tree that you can go to on these trails. I've walked them dozens and dozens of times. And so lots of different things going on there. Some connected to the Confederate, uh, the Confederacy and its history in the state of Alabama. Some of it, you know, pretty much completely unconnected to it, like the walking trails. But regardless, there is now a call from the House Minority Leader, Anthony Daniels of Huntsville, to try to defund the entirety of the park. And he says here, and I quote, absolutely, it's not appropriate. I'm not going to say where the dollars should go without evaluating the budget further, but I know that there are much better places than that these dollars could go than fund something that brings a lot of pain to black America, uh, back to Alabamians. And by the way, the NAACP made a statement, and I, I'm not sure which one came first. I'm not sure if they were adopting the minority leader's words in the NAACP statement or the reverse happened, and the representative here was quoting the NAACP statement, and, and that's what sort of kick-started his movement to defund it. I'm not sure what the origin of this is, but either way, they made another statement that said something very similar, that this is causing all kinds of pain to black Americans, which... I found their statement really odd because it was talking about just the sight of a Confederate flag, uh, to which I had two pretty obvious rebuttals, which is, A, well, this is a Confederate park, not a place that, you know, it's, it's not just a Confederate flag. Like, it's, it's not as though the state is maintaining that giant rebel flag up there next to the interstate that's privately funded. I mean you might have something of a case if that were what was going on, but this is an entire memorial park, including all the things that I talked about with museums, cemeteries, church, that kind of thing. And the second really big part of this that is uh, somewhat, you know, baffling, how does it cause you pain if you don't go there? Like, if you are somebody, and I don't understand this personally, especially being a historian that has seen things like actual Nazi artifacts, but if you are a person that is triggered by the mere sight of a Confederate flag, or it's not actually the Confederate flag, it's more appropriately referred to as the rebel flag, but if you see the rebel flag and you as a person, uh, regardless of, of the reason or the rationale, are immediately put into pain just by the mere sight of it, which I find ridiculous on the surface, but even if that is the case, you would think you would have enough sense to avoid a place called the Confederate Memorial Park. I would imagine a very, very small percentage of Alabamians overall, regardless of their skin color, have actually been to the Confederate Park or know of its existence. Now, I do because I grew up right around it. Now, I'm not saying it's exactly the same. I'm not saying it's exactly a one-to-one -one comparison. I imagine that there are Jews that would be understandably in a lot of pain going to the Holocaust Museum in the Smithsonian 
in Washington, D.C. I'm sure that would be very painful for, very, for a lot of them for very legitimate reasons. Should we defund it just because there are some citizens within the United States that would be in pain seeing that? That's not a good reason to defund it. Singling out one specific park because there are some people that may not like to go there really doesn't make any sense. I could round you up no shortage of people that don't like camping. That doesn't mean that we should shut down Chihuahua just because there are people that would not enjoy going there. That doesn't make any sense. And whether you like it or not, and, and Alan West made a fantastic point about this, history does not exist for it to be liked. It's not the purpose of history. In fact, normally, uh, a person that is at least somewhat fair-minded looks at mistakes that were made in the past, that looks at history and says, okay, we really need to preserve this because there needs to be some record of mistakes that have been made in the past so that we do not make the same mistakes in the future. But that is a significant, important part of Alabama's history. I mean, for Pete's sake, the state seceded from the Union for a period of time. That's something that we need to know about. So if we defund the Confederate Park, we would have to defund the archives building there in the state with the, the museum that they have, which actually is a really cool museum. I, I definitely encourage people to go. We have to defund things like DeSoto Caverns. Uh, we have to defund different museums around the state that are funded by the government. If we're just going to defund museums and parks, we need to defund all of it because, I mean, there are displays in the Alabama museum there that have both things from the Confederacy, items from that, and also show things from slavery and, and the slave trade there in the United States. Heck, the uh, Equal Justice Initiative, which I know isn't state-funded, that's definitely a, a privately uh, funded uh, organization, I guess is the best way to say it. They're a privately funded organization that maintains that lynching memorial. There are definitely people that would be, rightfully so, upset at seeing that that does not mean we should get rid of it. That doesn't mean that it should not exist. I remember, because I'm more than two years old, I remember when the argument was being made, well, we need to get rid of Confederate flags, again, more accurately described as the rebel flag. We need to get rid of those things, and they need to be put into a museum. We don't need to have them, for example, on public lands where anybody could just walk by and see them. What we need to do is, if it's a taxpayer uh, piece of land or property, it's okay for them to exist, but they need to be in a museum. This is them coming after the museum, because that's exactly what is in the Confederate Memorial Park, a museum about the Confederacy. They said, look, it, it belongs in a museum, just relegate it to that. I think that is a legitimate argument. I, I think that there's, you know, decent points to be made on both sides of it. But if your argument is going to be, because that was what the left was saying, well, that thing, yeah, we want to preserve history, just put it into, mu into a museum. Well, this is a museum. This is a place specifically set aside for people to study history of a specific era in the state of Alabama. This is a place where you can do that, and they're saying, no, we want to get rid of that too. They're constantly moving the goalpost. We saw something very similar a couple weeks ago when rioters broke into a museum in Virginia and destroyed a bunch of Confederate, uh, historically significant portions, their uh, parchments, uh, flags, all kinds of stuff. They destroyed a lot of history even though they said, hey, let's put it into a museum. Well, people did put it into a museum, and a bunch of rioters got together and burned it. And so, I mean, that argument is dead. This is about erasing history. This is about erasing things that we need to understand. There needs to be monuments to these things, if nothing else to remind us that we don't want to go to that place again if nothing else, so that people know and are aware of what is going on and what happened in the past so we do not repeat those mistakes in the future. That's the reason these things do need to exist. And on a personal level, and I know that this is coming from me and this isn't something that's necessarily objective, but 
I spent an awful lot of time at that park as a kid. It was very close to my high school and very close to my church. We used it for all kinds of events. When I was in high school, because I was very active in the FFA and my dad was my ag teacher, he had a food plot down there at the Confederate Park and a, a plot of land that wasn't you know, being used. This just happens to be part of the, the park. We had a food plot down there for the local high school to grow vegetables and fruits for the community, and we did. People could come by. They could pick it any time they wanted to. We had the people there in the FFA cultivate it, plow it. I cannot tell you the number of summers I spent at that place plowing and, and making sure that it was maintained because in the summer, of course, all the kids are out of school, so I was the only kid left that my dad had to use as free manual labor. Uh, but, you know, that, that's something that happened. This is a part of that community. And what they are suggesting would rob people of that. Like I said, that there's hiking trails, nature trails all throughout the park. Every year for Easter, my church, which was only about mm, maybe five, six minutes away from this uh, park, they have pavilions there where people go and you can rent them out and reserve it for a day or two. We did that and we would have fellowship meals over there. We had that. Every year that I was at Midway that I can recall, uh, we would have Easter egg hunts, and then we would actually have evening service in their church building there in the park. And that's how I know about the acoustics being so good there. And by the way, we were not the only people that did that. People all over that community would reserve things for there. I had a birthday party there once. I went to other people's birthday parties there when they would reserve the pavilion uh, there were several other churches. You actually had to be on the list like a year in advance to make sure that at the, the Sunday that you wanted it, it when I say, it, we, you know, my church doesn't really celebrate Easter as being anything more than uh, just another Sunday. We celebrate every Sunday because it's the resurrection of the Lord. And so we usually reserved it about two or three weeks ahead of time because there was less, you know, push to get it because a lot of people wanted it specifically on Easter Sunday. But we did that, and that was something that enhanced the community. And you know what else? When we went, there were black people with us. Because my church is, is like the church is supposed to be, which is there are no color barriers. That people come in and out as they choose. In fact, Midway now is actually a majority black church. And I've gone and preached there before. But the congregation there, we, every time that I can remember, had at least a few black members and they all went and enjoyed the fellowship at the Confederate Park just like everybody else. This is not a thing that is specifically reserved only for white Alabamians. This is something that is an important part of the community and an important part of Alabama's history. And some moron from Huntsville that's never been there and doesn't know what all it entails, if you're going to talk about defunding it, you should at least go down there and look at it first. You shouldn't assume that it is inappropriate just because it has the word Confederate in it. This is the problem that we've run into. There are people that are trying to erase anything that they think might potentially be offensive at some point to somebody. They're going out and slaying imaginary giants like Don Quixote, trying to virtue signal that they, look at me, I am the freedom fighter that is fighting for the minorities and the oppressed, you should vote for me. It's absurd. This guy is just trying to make political hay by destroying something that is an important part of Alabama's community there in Marbury. And it's absolutely disgusting. I, I'd invite the minority leader to come on my show anytime. He has a standing invitation to debate this issue with me. Bring it on. I have no scruples about doing that whatsoever. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.